So hello, you wonderful citizen of the internet, and welcome to a bit of a waffle about the crazy drama that is blowing up all over spiritual TikTok right now. There is so much to say about this, but I think my main intrigue in this particular thing is that something very similar happened to me back in 2014. And at the time, I was like, that was the weirdest thing. Like, that, I'm never going to encounter something this weird again. And now the exact same scenario is playing out over on Spiritual TikTok. Um, basically, what has happened, there is a woman who has posted a series of videos, including naming the guy she's talking about. And I hope it goes without saying, please do not send hate or harassment to, to anyone involved in this. I think people need need help and they need a break from the internet and things like that. I don't think they need hate and harassment coming at them in any kind of way. So anyway, this this woman has posted these videos and she has named this guy who is a male spiritual TikToker and she was talking about the fact that he had been energetically attacking her, he had been astral projecting to her, and what it sounded like initially was that they had been in this intense and very negative seven month long relationship that she was talking about the fact that he wouldn't leave his girlfriend for her, despite the fact she, he kept promising that they were going to get married, that he was going to move there, they were going to get married, there was going to be this whole big future for them. And yet sometimes he was he was quite negative towards her. He was, you know, it really sounded like they had this this intimate long term relationship until you realize that actually. No, they didn't. All of it had taken place, in her words, telepathically and on the astral plane. So all of it had taken place in her head, essentially, because the only real world contact they had had was when she booked a couple of psychic sessions with him. And it sounded like she brought up what she thought was going on and he shut her down and said, no, we're not, we're not twin flames, we're not going to get married. He had a girlfriend, so you know, he, he he had his whole thing going on over there. Um, and yet, even though she had heard from the horse's mouth, I'm not doing this. this, this is not what's going on, she was still very much entrenched in these delusions for months and months and months. And obviously, this delusion continued up to and beyond the point when she made the videos because her, her intent with making the videos, it, I mean, it was sad because her intent was very pure because she really believed that this had happened and that this guy was genuinely like a psychic menace. Like he was going out and doing terrible things to women psychically, that he had these abilities and he was really misusing them and she wanted to warn the spiritual community about him. And obviously, if you said this kind of stuff in most spheres of the world, probably you would you would be met with with logic and it wouldn't be anything bad really for the guy in question because most people would say, look, I. I think you need to talk to someone. But of course, that's we're talking about spiritual TikTok here, right? So, so many people are believing her to the extent that the last thing I saw from the guy in question, who I wasn't aware of previously, I didn't, I didn't know him at all, but he started popping up on my For You page now that all of this drama is going on. And the last thing I saw was him saying, look, I, I'm getting off the internet. Like I'm, people are coming at me from all sides. I'm getting off the internet. I don't know when I'll be back. And I could see that that was possibly going to happen because there were so many people in her comments believing her. But obviously what's going on in one person's comments does not translate to, is it going to carry? Like that's one person's fan base, right? So they're, they're going to be on their side. I thought surely no one's going to go after this guy for this stuff. But once again, it's spiritual TikTok. Of course they did. Um, which brings me to my own experiences with this kind of thing. So what happened to me in 2014 was that I was basically in this guy's position. Um, there was a guy I knew on the goth scene, going to clubs and things like this. He was a friend for a while. He seemed pretty normal. He did have this thing that he was psychic. Like he would say, you know, I'm psychic, but he, he kept it on the down low. Like he wasn't proud of it. He wasn't waving it around. I'm so psychic. Let me do your cards. Like, it was kind of like a bit of a secret, but he he trusted me with this secret that he was psychic. And, I, you know, at the time, I wasn't really into any of that stuff. And I just thought, OK, well, everyone on the goth scene's a little bit weird on me, so it's fine. And then I he asked me if he can send me a letter. And I'm like, 
email. <laughs> um, so I give him my email address and I start getting these bizarre fucking messages where he's convinced we're in a psychic relationship, where he's talking about my psychic presence is astrally crawling into bed with him in the mornings and snuggling with him and telling him that I love him and God knows what else. Um, I've still got the emails. Like I've, I've made a video about this and I'm thinking I might redo it in writing just so it's a bit more updated because it is a fucking weird story. Um, and in the end, this escalated and escalated and escalated and everything I said to this guy... I was constantly telling him, no, no, I'm not. I'm not psychically gifted. I'm not doing these things. Are you dealing with a trickster spirit? Are you deluded? Do you need help? You know, was the main thing. I was trying to get him to seek help, you know, and he, you know, he he kind of said, oh, I've had bad experiences with the mental health system. Oh, I've, I've tried Prozac and it didn't really do. I'm thinking Prozac ain't what you need, man. Um you know, and I was I was trying to be tactful, but I was trying to push him towards like, seriously, this is not me, so you need help. It got really scary because you start thinking about consent when it comes to that kind of stuff. And it's like when someone doesn't listen when you say no, because they're convinced by their own delusions that you're saying, yes, please, please do this to me. And everything that comes out of your mouth is, oh, it's just trickery. Oh, they're just playing a game with you. You know, you know to trust their astral presence more. What the fuck could become of that? Like one day down a dark alleyway, I'm saying no, he's convinced that I'm just playing games with him. It was genuinely terrifying the more and more I thought about it. And eventually I shut him down very hard, blocked him on everything. And then he stopped replying to me. But that made it even scarier because at least when he was replying, I knew where his head was at. So the point at which he stopped replying was the point at which I basically didn't go out socialising for a year. I don't know what became of him to this day. I've not heard from him. And like I said, that was 2014. So I don't know, like, whether something tragic happened after I shut him down. Like, he was so invested in this thing. And then I shut him down hard. He went silent. No one heard from him. I hope nothing tragic happened to him. But that was how intense it was. So I really feel for this guy in this TikTok drama situation because it was bad enough when it was just this guy coming at me with, with his delusions. But for the guy on TikTok, he has now got the whole of spiritual TikTok coming at him and saying, how could you do this to this girl? Like, what are you doing? You're evil. What are you doing? That is like the equivalent to me being in my situation and suddenly all of our friends on the goth scene coming to me and going, why are you playing games with this guy? Like, why why would you keep crawling into bed with him and saying you love it? You know, it would be like the whole world had jumped on board this guy's crazy train <laughs> and were coming at me. So I can understand why this guy on TikTok is is basically on his last nerve and is, is just getting off the platform. Um, and that's awful because it sounds like that's that's a large part of his livelihood and he's been chased away from it by something that although I have whack beliefs I don't believe this guy did this thing much as I don't know him and who knows you know he, yes he's got a, a bit of a weird spiritualist vibe about him um even if he is capable of astral projecting and planting spiritual technology in people's energy fields and all the other stuff that that's been going around I just think, why? Why would you bother when it's when it's someone you don't even know? When you've got a girlfriend, you've got your career, you've got everything going on, and this is someone you don't even know? Why would you go to that length for seven months? Why would you do it? Um, I could understand if you had those abilities and someone fucked you over, <laughs> I could understand using those abilities to get revenge on them in some kind of way. But when it's like a complete stranger, ain't no one got time for that, basically is how I feel about it. Although being me with my whack beliefs, I'm kind of like, well, there's clearly an element of spiritual psychosis going on there. But equally, I do know there are nasty entities out there that get a great deal of pleasure from causing confusion and chaos and fucking your life over in a huge way. So I don't know whether this woman has been interacting with something that was pretending very convincingly to be this guy just just for shits and giggles and to feed on her heightened emotions that is entirely possible um but all the same i think like even if you fully wholeheartedly believe yourself to be in this this spiritual disaster situation you've got to seek medical treatment when this kind of stuff happens um you know because 
antipsychotics and things can help you sort the wheat from the chaff in terms of, okay, what do I need to deal with spiritually? What What is a medical issue? Because if you have been sucked into this kind of delusion for a long time, even if it started with something spiritual, it is going to end in psychosis. And that is something that is really, really, really difficult to crawl yourself, claw yourself out of, even with medication and therapy and all the rest of it. So if you're on your own in it, and worse still, honestly, if you're surrounded by spiritual TikTok with people feeding into your delusion and saying, yes, of course, of course, this is going on. And spiritual TikTok kind of has become the wild west in terms of like new frontiers of bonkers beliefs being made into wholesale of course this is true type things i've said before and i think quite a few people have said honestly um the amount of tiktoks and comments on tiktoks that you see over on spiritual tiktok where someone clearly is in spiritual psychosis or is teetering on the verge of spiritual psychosis and no one, no one is questioning them. No one is saying, look, you know, I, I don't necessarily think you're okay. But when you've got to the point where you're seeing signs and synchronicities in everything, and I mean everything, when, and I've heard people saying like, oh, my outlook is that everything that crosses my path, even if it's a stranger and the color of cardigan they're wearing, or like the random words they say as they walk past, or anything I overhear in the grocery store, everything I hear is, is like a sign from the universe and is a message to me from the universe. It's like, Oh, honey, that, that is incredibly dangerous thinking. I mean, that, that is borderline schizophrenic thinking. Like, it's, it's really going to be very easy to get sucked into spiritual delusions, thinking like that. But over on spiritual TikTok, that kind of thing is encouraged. Like, the more you can be in, engaged in all of this stuff and the more signs and synchronicities and downloads you're getting, like, ugh. And then obviously something like this happens and it just shows how troubled spiritual TikTok really is. That you can have something like this happen where it has become quite a divisive issue on spiritual TikTok. People are finally talking about spiritual psychosis and the fact that it can happen. But equally, there are people making some, some quite good points along the lines of, if we say we believe in astral projection and in energetic attacks and in all of this stuff, why would we not believe a woman when she comes forward and says all of this is going on? Which is like, well, because, because people are so desperate to seem like they are the most, like the most psychic and the most like aligned with their higher self and blah, 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 blah. No one ever wants to just, just take a step back and, and be the voice of reason because that's just so deeply uncool there. And it, you know, it's, it's really a dangerous, dangerous culture when it's, people are so against you saying, look, no, I think you've gone too far. I think you're deluded. Like you, you have to, you have to like embrace every delusion you have and embrace everyone else's delusions. And it's got to be like this, this free open space for people to come with bizarre ideas. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of nice until it's not, you know, until something like this happens and someone's life and career and reputation get ruined over something that, that they never did. And that, like, say, like, it's so frustrating trying to persuade even one person that you are not doing this mad shit, let alone when so many people are coming at you. Like, it's 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 scary from both people's perspective, because I think one thing I would really like to say, and I should have said this earlier on, but I think it's important to remember anyone who does know the woman I'm talking about, if you've seen her around or if she's popping up on your For You page, I think something that, that is vitally important to remember is that she has been through shit like just because what she thinks is happening is not happening doesn't mean that it's not real to her for seven months right that is a long time for seven months she has been through some level of spiritual hell whether that's spiritual psychosis whether it's some kind of trickster entity fucking with her who knows but for seven months she has been through this misery and now she's put herself in this this very public position with everything that's going on with her and I suspect that she's probably getting kind of a backlash by now because of the fact that he has gone, look, <laughs> screw this, I'm getting offline. His subscribers are going to be probably coming to her and going, what the hell have you done? Like, what, what, why? Why would you do this? You know, um, and the last comments I saw from her on, on her own stuff, she still seemed very determined that, yes, it was him. Yes, I know it was him. I know it was him. Um, 
And I, you know, I don't know how long it takes and how many people coming at you it takes before you start to to doubt that and you start to realize, oh wow, like I've I've really been kind of led on a merry dance by something here, whether it's my own brain cells, whether it's something spooky, I don't know. But like and when she reaches that point of realizing, oh, this was a delusion, um, that that is horrible. Even if even if you haven't put your delusion out there for I don't know how many people to discuss. Honestly, what speaking as someone who has experienced spiritual psychosis, not of this kind of type where it's overlapping with limerence and there's someone else being dragged into your stuff. Like for me, it was it was much more of an isolating kind of experience. But one of the most horrible bits of spiritual psychosis is that point where everything you've been believing starts to crack. Because even if what you're believing is scary, there's kind of a safety in knowing the rules, knowing what's going on, and you're doing your thing. And like in her case, she's doing the righteous thing in her mind. And she is telling everyone, look, he has been doing this. He's the bad guy. Like, you need to watch out for him. I'm here. You know, and she was saying like, oh, my, my spiritual guides have been guiding me to actually naming him. It didn't feel right before, but it feels right now. So you feel like you're being guided. You feel like you know what you're doing. And then the point at which that psychosis cracks and you start to realize this isn't real. None of this is real. Everything I've been laboring under for however long was not real. Um, that's so scary because at that point, it's it's like the world has just turned to jello underneath your feet. You don't understand anything and you don't know what's been going on for the last while. And you have to build a whole new like belief system around what's been going on. Um uh, yeah, and it's quite scary. So I think it, it definitely needs bearing in mind that she has been through shit and is going through shit um, and needs to be guided gently towards seeking some kind of help. Um, and I think the other thing to say is that what really should have happened here is that, you know, if you are in this this kind of place where you're a spiritual person and you're getting sudden like astral visits from someone or telepathic messages from someone and it relates to someone else on earth that you think you're in contact with someone else on earth at that point my god you've got to go and talk to them in reality like if you are physically capable of doing it if they are someone who will answer a dm from you you have got to go and check out is this really happening if you want to believe in this stuff and you want to go further down the path of what you're hearing in your head you need to check out in reality, like, is this real or am I being jerked about by some spiritual pest or a delusion? You've got to check it out. And you've got when you speak to that person and they say, No, I'm not doing this, this is not me, you you can't you can't override that. You you can't go, I'm not gonna believe your words, I'm gonna believe uh my own psychic power. Like, no matter how talented you are psychically, you've, you've got to know that there is so much wishy-washy doubt and so much capacity for uh, for your imagination to run away with you, for spiritual pests to run away with you. That There is so much wishy-washiness in anything psychic. It is not a solid thing. Whereas speaking to someone pretty directly is a lot more solid. You've got to believe that over anything psychic. So if they've said to you no... And yet you're still getting something chattering in your head and it's being very persuasive. And and again, speaking as someone who's been through spiritual psychosis, persuasive, yes. It knows you inside out. It knows your weaknesses. It knows what you will fall for. And it's very persuasive. But you, you've got to hold on to knowing it's not this person, which means you need to shut that thing out in whatever way possible, whether that is with antipsychotic medication and seeing a therapist, and I would say that is the first port of call, um, whether it's with banishing rituals, all of that, whether you go for the you know the full, full-pronged full attack and do all of those things, which is probably not a bad idea, um, yeah, you've, 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 got, you've got to place trust in reality more than in, you know? <laughs> um, I hope the two people involved in all of this will be okay in their own ways. Like, I hope she will find some help from somewhere. She, you know, she's got a lot of work and a lot of stress ahead of her, so I think anyone who knows who I'm talking about and is in discussion with her, just be nice. Um, you know, and similarly, he's, he's, being, he's going through, you know, because... 
online shitstorms are horrible to go through. And he it's not like he can even make an apology video because he hasn't done anything wrong. Um, you know, when when you've when you've made your own fuck up, like it's awful and it's bad enough when you've when you've made a really big fuck up, you feel so stupid. But at least you can at least you can apologize for it and you can learn from it and something good comes out of it, you know, because you've learned a big lesson. But when you've done nothing wrong and everyone's just turned on you, you know, that's that's almost like learned helplessness. You 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 just start to feel like whatever I do, I'm gonna get kicked for it. Like I can't fucking win. Um and you know, I, I think most people online have not to that that level of experience, but I think we've all had experiences where you've done something that you you didn't know was going to be any kind of problem. You were just going about your business, doing normal stuff. And for some reason, some weird niche corner of the internet has gotten a bug up its butt about something you've done. And suddenly you're under fire about this stuff that just seems so bizarre. And that, honestly, I think looking back on on my own kind of YouTubing and all of that, definitely that affected me the most, far more than when I'd fucked up and I'd done something heinously embarrassing and stupid. And, you know, you kick yourself for years after stuff like that. But when it's something that you didn't even realize was a problem, fucks you to your core because you 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 feel like you can't take a step in any direction without being kicked because you're like, my God, that was so innocent. That was so innocent. And... People don't give you like like an inch of leeway to make honest mistakes in this world of social media. So I feel for him in that. Like it's 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 a a, a huge head fuck and it affects you for a long time. So I hope he will be okay and will manage to reclaim his platform and all of that. And spiritual TikTok just really needs to have a think about spiritual psychosis and the fact that it's real and the fact that they are really flirting with it on a daily basis. If you are going to be this heavily into spiritual stuff, the likelihood of you having at least one bout of spiritual psychosis is pretty fucking high. So it would be wise to learn the signs and symptoms and to realize that, my God, there have to be, there have to be fences and guidelines in life. You know, you can't push anything to like, you know, to its ultimate extent and think there's never going to be a problem. And when it's this spiritual stuff, it's like you, you've got to ground yourself sometimes. You've got to partake in mundane thought and mundane activity to stay sane sometimes. And you've got to realize that, you know, as some, I saw someone else talking about the drama on TikTok just, just as I was getting ready. And they were talking about spiritual TikTok prides itself on being so, so healed and so progressive and so, um, so evolved. And yet, so many people on there are really not you know that this this desire to, to witch hunt and to tear people apart and to get involved in drama like it, it's so base and it's so low and you would think that people who are all about raising their vibrations and being evolved and all of this ascended and all of the rest of it you would think they would be better than this but clearly they are not um so i, I think spiritual tiktok needs to have a good hard look in the mirror yeah but uh, as i say like Although, although this woman has has you know really stirred the pot and has really caused a lot of issues for this guy, I don't think she did it with any malicious intent. I think her intent, as I say, sadly was really kind of noble. Um, and you, you can't you can't you can't commit like a, a noble righteous act from a place of complete delusion. You're only going to make more of a mess of it. Um, so I think it's probably best for her if she hasn't already, to, to take a break from particularly spiritual TikTok, but to take a break from TikTok and to, to ground in the real world um, and all of that and see a doctor. But anyway, this is a huge waffle at this point, so I guess I'm going to shut up. If there's anything else you think I should waffle about relating to spiritual TikTok and spiritual psychosis and all of that stuff, please let me know. Um, yeah, I hope you're all doing all right. And if you have your own weird experiences with this kind of stuff, that would be interesting to hear about too. Because, yeah, when this happened to me in 2014 with this guy, I did think, like, this is such a one-off, like, whack thing to happen and to hear about. And then to realise this is a thing that happens. Like, people do get into this state of limerence. And if it's combined with believing you have psychic powers, this can happen. Um, and it's not good. Uh, but anyway, this is a waffle. I'm going to shut up, so uh, see you soon. Over and out. Bye-bye.